market a break from the garbage An artist, sensitive about mind and pardon No margin for error, flawless beware The black cat goddess, you walk Walking with a panther Painting these pictures with words like Samantha Magava, alchemy on the track, make it lava And I won't stop rocking till I retire Single or a plural, she make numero uno Colder than you Hey, it's your girl, Matter Money, a.k.a. Trap, 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 and welcome to the eighth episode of Ass Trap. Make sure you hit that like button, make sure you hit the subscribe button, and let's get it. First and foremost, I want to say I'm sorry for the last couple of reviews I did, like the sound was all off and stuff. I didn't even drop everything I recorded, because, man, fuck all of that. We ain't doing that around here. But, moving right along, we're going to do this right here, because this here, what I like to do, nigga, I got time today, because, I don't even talk like that, let me stop playing around, all right, our first question comes from my mama, not a thought, I ain't fucking with you, dog, um, is it safe to say if you rap about guns, drugs, and money over loops, you're automatically cool? No, it doesn't mean that at all. You an asshole for that question. No, I'm gonna tell you that right there. But it's a little, it's a lot of niggas out there that be doing that shit. I don't find them cool at all. You feel me? You will find too. See, it's weird. See, I don't wanna put nobody out there like that and shit like that. A lot of these niggas don't like don't do anything that they be rapping about. Like, be clear, and I be like really like stuck sometime when I'm hanging out and I'm around some of these people and like uh, they might have a song out like smoke a blunt uh smoke a blunt pour a beer out smoke a blunt pour a beer out and they don't even fucking smoke or drinks who the fuck they be talking to so nah that type of shit don't automatically make you cool you feel me you might hit one time one time in this but niggas know what the deal is niggas know that shit ain't what's up I ain't fucking with you anyway you feel me I love you to death but I ain't fucking with you because of your question, your ass. Um, next question comes from Black Steel 7. With the resurgence of artists that tend to push the envelope like Chambada, shout out to Chambada, King Los, or even a cannabis with the Horseman EP. Wait. Yo, what envelope did cannabis push on that Horseman EP? I'm going to be real clear with you. That was one of the reviews that I couldn't get out there because the sound really wasn't right. Hey, y'all, uh, I didn't hear no envelopes being pushed across any of that album coming from cannabis now i understand what you're saying here all right just the rest of the question in this day and age can an artist be too lyrical because the content and subject matter has a tendency to go over the listener's head <laughs> that doesn't even just happen in lyricism that happens with with slang that happens with a lot of things um in my personal opinion an artist can never be too lyrical artists really have to understand their audience you feel me if you're not pushing for a mainstream audience i don't think you could ever be too lyrical but like yo a lot of shit fly over people's heads even if you're just not current in the culture it could be something really really mundane like that it's crazy because like i kind of think of battle rap in that sense and stuff like that too when you know somebody is saying a bar it has to relate to the culture for people to get it otherwise people don't get it you feel me i tell a lot of jokes that fly over a lot of people said because they're not consciously aware of what's going on or it might not have hit them yet what's going on so you feel me i don't really think that you could be too lyrical because of the content like somebody like chambada right and i respect him like so much since i was put on to him like just like last year you feel me he had the project out where um loaded lux and everything like that and i respect everything that they do i wouldn't want to call them too lyrical in that respect the content is really really deep and heavy though the content he's like one of the best esoteric rappers you understand me when i say that to you and there's a lot of esoteric rappers out there but it's levels to that like it's tears to that too and he's at the high tier of that but if you're into that you you can never be too lyrical with that. You can never, it can never be a, a thing of being too lyrical with that. So I definitely appreciate that. A lot of just basic mundane shit go over niggas' heads every day. Look at, look at Jay Z for, for instance. You feel me? A lot of shit goes over people's heads so much just because they think they know what he's talking about, but they don't really know what he's talking about. We come back all these years later and be like, oh shit, that's what that meant. So I don't think it really has to do with content or whatever. It's just, just how you like how aware you are of the content really with that i don't think 
you could be too lyrical in that aspect. Like, not at all. That's what that's what the shit's supposed to be. Um, you gave me another question too. I was re-listening to 38 and um Cool G rap. Um, Son of Cool G rap, right? And it's a superb album. If you had to put together a golden era artist and an independent artist, who would it be? It's crazy coming off of this, like Coming off of like the BET Awards and stuff, I haven't spoke to y'all in a long time. Coming out to like the BET Awards and stuff, like first thing just coming to mind to me is like a, a Queen Latifah uh, side rock album. That would be, be dope. I wouldn't even want to put her with Rhapsody. I want to put her with somebody like side rock in that instance. Uh, hmm. It's crazy because I feel like Big Daddy Kane owes us like some shit like this right now. We need a Big Daddy Kane and somebody album. I don't even know if you go like. Willie the Kid, and I always want to throw like Edo in this mix too. So I want to ask y'all, what golden era rapper would Edo pair up with to make one of these fire projects? Like how you know um, Styles P and Dave East had Beloved or this um, Kooji, Son of Kooji rap album. I think that was really really dope um, project as well. But you know, well, for the ladies, you feel me, Queen Latifah. Uh, Cyrock, I want to see Big Daddy Kane come out to do something for whatever reason, you feel me? I need, like, Willie the Kid, and I need Edo to do something like this in this respect, too. So help me out with that one. But I appreciate all your questions. Black Steel 7, bang, bang, bang. Um, next question comes from Obi the God. Salute to you, Obi. I fuck with you. Um, what do people mean when they say a rapper can't make songs? Do they expect him to sing? Or feature more R&B artists. No. That is not what anybody means when they say that a certain artist can't make a song. See, what's happening in the underground right now is not songwriting. Songwriting is not happening. Rapping is happening. Lyrics is happening. But song composition is not happening in the underground. As if they're giving you the same format. Intro, verse we not even getting hooks in the underground like that to be honest with you so it's like intro verse 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 outro intro pop of shit outro pop of shit verses in the middle not even three verses two verses we get in no song structure and that's what they mean by artists can't write a song let me give you an example right this is one of the one of the primary examples of excellent rap song writing right Let's go with a song that we all should know, like 50 Cent's uh, Patiently Waiting, all right? Let's take 50 Cent's Patiently Waiting, and let's break down the songwriting in this, okay? Now, it comes on with an intro. Dun, 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 AM, you my favorite white boy, whatever, that's the intro. Then it starts with the hook. I've been patiently waiting for a track to explode on. Then he comes in with his verse, right? I'm innocent in my head, like a baby born dead, all right? Then we go back into the hook, and I think we get the hook twice on there, right? Or something to that effect. But then there's a bridge in here. Eminem has a bridge. His, his bridge, you know, I've been patiently waiting, debating, through all the hate, whatever he says there. Then he goes into his verse, right? Then we get hit with the hook again, and then 50 Cent gives us a bridge. You feel me? They say it's 50. They say it's 50. Man, that wasn't 50. Don't holler my name. And then he goes into his into his verse, right? You know, if you got a glass jaw, you, you whatever whatever he says there, right? That's advanced songwriting. Those are people that can write songs. 50 at the time at the highlight of his career or whatever got, you know, um, the ASCAP award for songwriting is because these intricacies is in there. They're not giving us that same basic, like I said, underground is not even giving us a basic songwriting technique and intro, verse, hook, verse, hook, you feel me, outro, whatever. They're not even giving us that. They're just giving us whatever the fuck they want to do. A lot of artists don't even understand time and measure, neither though. So we have a lot of people out here with unorthodox flows which is nothing wrong with that. But if you don't understand the beats, time, and measure as well on there, people are going to say you can't write a song. People are going to say you can't write a song because you're not understanding the dynamics of what makes a song a song. Let's go into another type of example of excellent 
songwriting with a different composition pattern, right? All right. Uh, a song I like, I always love fucking West Side Guns, Undertaker versus Goldberg, right? So it comes on, intro is always do, 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 brrr, that's the intro on they shit, right? He says his verse, he ends his verse, Pyrex, I want to thank you, right? That's his verse. Now the bridge in there is people talking. The bridge in there is like, schedule for one fall only, you feel me? Then the second beat drop, like the beat switch happens, and then we get hit with another verse. Conway, he says something in there because they understand timing. He says something like, you know, uh, I'm going to hit you right back or whatever have you because it's a gap in the beat for what, they, what they're trying to do. So he puts that in there. Then he starts his verse on time. And then it's the outro. The outro is also speaking. This one's for the ladies, blah, 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 whatever have you. So we have intro, verse, bridge, verse, verse, outro. It's no hook involved, but it's interesting because they're switching up these patterns. And that's what they mean when they talking about songwriting ability. Like a lot of niggas can rap. A lot of niggas can rap, but a lot of people can't write songs. Again, that's something that they say a lot with, you know, battle rap crossovers and stuff like that. Because there are templates involved to writing songs. It's not just you going in there spitting. You know what I'm saying? Like if you don't understand a couple of the complexities of going with really excellent and advanced songwriting, people are going to say you can't write a song. No matter how good the lyrics is, people are going to say you can't write a song. And they're right. You feel me? So I respect that question a lot. OB, you feel me? Thank you for that. Um, Got to show my little skills off there a little bit. Next question comes from... I don't know, Dame, Dame do 5-2, blah, 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 eh, 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 eh. all right, all right. Why do you think guys like <clears throat> OC or Feral March, despite they pen, have a tendency to get left out of these top 10 to 15 lists, but get the underrated tag? And <sighs> first of all, because they are underrated, but they get left out of these lists, because they're not as active as other people on these lists. Now, when you sit there and you construct top 10s and 15s overall and stuff like that, you're going to find that these people have extensive bodies of work that are like mainstream bodies of work. This ain't necessarily the case with these two individuals that you put out there. Because the consistency is consistency is not there. Now, I know Pharaoh Monarch, he just dropped a project this year, whatever have you. I ain't too particularly a fan of it. I love the concept of it. I like the musical arrangement of it, you know, with the rock themes and all of this stuff and stuff like that. But I'm not really a fan of what happened on the album. Don't get me wrong here. But when's the last time you really heard him before that? When's the last time you heard OC? So they tend to get forgotten about for people that have more impactful bodies of work, even though, you know, it might not be as much or whatever have you, or it is more. They kind of get left out of that, and they're going to be called underrated because that's exactly what they are. They're being called underrated because they don't fit into the ratings. And I think that has a lot to do with consistency, if we be honest here. But I appreciate your question. Thank you so much, Dame Poe. Fine, too. Eh, 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 eh. All right, next question comes from um, uh, Hove the Great. What's your thoughts on the new Sky Zoo album? Love it. Album of the year. Like, <laughs> it's crazy because, like, last year, I had Allegory as my album of the year as soon as I heard it. And as soon as I heard this, I am, like, in a safe space to say that this is the album of the year. I don't think nobody could come and really knock what was done on that project off. And I really, really hope them over at Mellow Music Group or whatever have you put him in consideration for a Grammy this year. Because with that type of content and that type of musicality that's going on there, as well as his lyrical ability... I don't think you could really, I don't think nobody's going to beat that dog. Like, I don't think nobody's going to beat that. And it's just due for him. It's time for him to get his just due on that type of a major scale like that. You know, Sky Zoo never misses. He's diverse. You feel me? And he does his thing on here. But that's my true 
thoughts about that you for me that's album of the year that shit is grammy worthy if we're gonna be real honest so thank you so much hold great for your question oh my god my god lucky my god lucky always hitting me over the head with mad questions how do you feel about ot the real uh he's all right he can spit you feel me the couple freestyles i've heard of him i've heard of it i don't really um how can i say this right I ain't really beat. Like, I ain't gonna lie to you. You know, it's a lot of nice people out there and stuff. He's one of them. I ain't mad at him. I uh, wish him the best and stuff, but I ain't gonna subscribe to him. I'm not gonna get all into his music or anything like that, but he's all right. He's nice. You feel me? He's all right. All right. Uh, what rapper would you not miss if they decided to never drop a project again in a while? Yo, it's crazy you asked me this question because I was just having a conversation like this and like, yo... I love Meek Mill. Like, I love what he brings to the table. Yes, I ain't too loud and all of this stuff. But I like that. I just like that gutter street shit. I've seen his elevation and his growth. I like all of that. But if I never got another Meek Mill project, I don't think I would be mad about that. I'm good with his discography just how it is. I think, I don't think that, I don't think that I would miss if he never dropped the project again. But I love him to death. Um... What's your opinion on Kaya Baby and Kamaya as rappers? All right. I review Kamaya's projects as they come out. She drops a lot of music. She drops a lot of music. A lot of y'all might not get a chance to listen to or whatever have you. She drops a lot of music. So I respect in the fact she drops a lot of music. She's giving you authentic West Coast every time she drops it. Uh, Kaya Baby, I ain't gonna lie to you. I've never really heard a project from her. But I'm fully, fully enthralled in her freestyles. And she can spit. She has her own style about her and everything like that. Like, I'm not mad on either one of them as rappers. But they're two total different things. Like, Kaya Baby spit spits to me. And Kamaya, she spits. But she's more... Like I said, she more radio ready type of situation going on, I think, with that. So thank you. It, lucky you still got another goddamn question for me. All right, listen. Do you think Vado, Nino Man, Dave East, and Don Q, hold on, man. First of all, first of all, first of all, do I think Vado should be with these other nigga? Check the age ranges on here because I don't even know how old Vado is. I don't know if he should be in this particular mix. To be honest with you, should form a uh, group, would they be able to drop a dope project as a group or not? I think, oh man, what can Nino Man bring to the table with Don Q and Dave East? See, I need a Dave East and Don Q album. I ain't gonna lie. I need a Don Q album. This is what I need. This is what I've been championing for. And was where the fuck is Don Q? You know, I be thinking sometimes niggas undercover locked up and nobody he don't fucking know that shit. They keep the shit under wrap. Because why haven't we gotten new Don Q music? That's what I need right there. Because he could spit. And he's respected, too. He's respected, too. So, yeah, I ain't a fan of all of that. I don't want that type of super group. I'm just reading over the names to myself and trying to see who will be doing what, where. And I don't think I want that. I don't think I want that. I think they'll be able to do something. A posse cut somehow, but I don't know about that. Anyway, thank you, Lucky. Like, I'm, I'm really puzzled by this lineup. Next question comes from J Baby Ears. My guy over there, names cracks me up each and every time. What still keeps Trap, which is me, excited about hip-hop? dog hip-hop in itself like you never know what's gonna come out next you never know what's gonna be new you like even if you dig in the past or you one of these hip-hop dinosaurs or whatever have you yo how could you not get excited about hip-hop just to see you know the the newer artists come in and, and how it matches up with what the older artists has done and all of these things like hip-hop is so influential we influence everything you feel me? Pop culture. We are pop culture. I don't think anybody understands that. It's funny because I put on a timeline the other day like me, you, my dad's boat. Like, them is two white boy comedians in there kicking a rap. You feel me? Like, you like you know what I mean? Look how we're involved in the culture. Just I know that's old, too. An old reference. But we are always just involved in the culture. So how could you not be excited about it? How could you not see, you know niggas that look like me and you flourish out here making money whether you really uh, participate in their type of uh hip-hop or not whether it's trap or this and the third like yo how could you not be a fan and get excited just to see us win as a whole period so that's what keeps me excited about it and you know it's a couple 
artists in general that keeps me there and keeps me in touch and in tune with everything but how could you not be excited about hip hop we we all we got you feel me we all we got so thank you so much Jay. baby ear salute to you I can't get over your name I swear to God um, next question comes from Trouble Smith with his profile rising if you were working with Stove God Cooks what direction would you advise him to go forward um, or keep doing what he does best or reach for the next level in this very moment. Now, he's in a tricky situation right now because if his next album, which I think uh, West Side Gun should be curating or whatever, if that shit ain't fucking fire, it's going to be a real missed opportunity. I don't think, you know, us on the hip hop Twitter, like real hip hop Twitter, like our side of hip hop Twitter, we are such a little small group, and I don't think y'all understand how small a group we really are and how we do support people that we support, but it's really just a tiny number of us. In this particular moment, I would not mind him doing exactly what he did on Reasonable Drought for this next project since he's going to get the highlight from West Side Gun. He's going to get more attention. I don't think he should change anything right now i think he should stick to that script that he did on reasonable drought and it is a script involved i don't know if y'all really noticed this but he's like i don't want to say steals but he uses a lot of other people's bars all the time and he flips them and he makes them his own he uses people's cadences and stuff like that to make the music interesting to give you some familiarity with it and it kind of makes you also like it's stick in your head what he's saying and what he's doing because he's using these he's doing these these reference points of these major artists drake and j cole and all of this stuff i think that he has to find his own little thing like that to draw into but i don't mind him using that type of cheat code in his work moving forward with this next project if it's going to get that same attention you know, like uh, what West Side Gun just did with Matt Homme, giving him all this attention and stuff. I think it'll pop him through the roof. You hear me? So I definitely respect uh, your question a lot, Trouble Smith. You feel me? Keep putting out good music too, my guy. I ain't forget about you. Next question comes from Real, Tr Real True Greek. Uh, top three favorite projects of this year. Oh, man. Y'all have so many dope projects that I respect this year. It's crazy. Um, man, Nappy High Villains. You want to talk about a strong compilation album? That's one. We have got, look, he also asked me my three disappointing. Let me go into that first since I brought up compilation albums, right? Lord Mob compilation. Fucking Trust the Sopranos. The Wolf of Wall Street. Oh, my goodness. This is some other, this is some other ones I'm missing here. So that's, that's like three on that side, right? top projects of the year is very very hard because it's a lot and it's a lot that y'all haven't really even heard about yet like um king micah and mighty's healthy king healthy too like dog that shit if y'all haven't listened to that make sure y'all listen to that um i'm gonna put hush kingpins both like <laughs> i gotta put three some ep up there i gotta put porsche porter's hush up there um uh, there's so many projects. Lloyd Banks thing. Yo, it's crazy because the streets ain't respecting Lloyd Banks project like how I thought they was. Like, I, I don't know. Like, a lot of people that I know are real hip-hop heads and fans said that that shit was boring. Now, I don't really agree with that, but it's one of the better projects of the year. I'll give them that. Uh, Pray for Haiti and, like, Briz Rothstein's, um Private Lectures. That's another one of my top ones this year. It's a couple. It's a couple. That um, Sky Zoo, of course, like I said, that's my favorite project thus far. Um, dog, that Onyx album, I still be listening to that on the low. You feel me? My shit be rocking like that sometimes. So thank you so much, Real True Greek, for the question. But, yeah, like, those compilation albums that, that came out, it's for Nappy Highs, Villains. Them shits is dead. Like, that shit is a wash. Um, another top compilation album came out this year. I'm not going to forget Paul, Peter, Rosenberg's, whatever, whatever have you. Late Nights. That was all right, too. There's a lot of good joints on there as well, too. So, salute to you for asking me that question. Thank you so much. Next question on here comes from Prince P2, the phenomenal producer. Salute to you, Cash Bear P. You feel me? 
Um, should rappers who have a style more fit for smooth records stick to that style, or should they try to rap on harder shit? <sighs> Yo, very few people is able to do both of that shit. Hus Kingpin is one of these people that's able to do both of them shits. Like, they can get real smooth on you, and they can get real hard on you at the same time. But if you have a smoother style, that don't mean that you can't come across on some gangster shit with some gangster lyrics. And that don't mean you necessarily have to change your style up for that type of thing, too. And it's crazy because I'm trying to think, I don't know why, like, in this particular instance, like, like a Nate dog keeps coming in my head, even though he's a singer. You feel me? with singing and stuff like that. But if you could keep that same melodic type thing on harder harder records that will work out but a smooth style that don't mean you can't come hard that don't mean you can't come hard at all you feel me like i said i think huss is really like the king of that the king of that giving you both and shit like that you know give you that late night music and that fucking daytime give you that shit that you looking for so nah i don't think i don't think anybody should just be one note everybody should try different things you feel me but before you give it to everybody make sure you have the right group of people around you and tell you nah dog that ain't working and that ain't cool or whatever have you but i think you know i think the right individual could do that Hus, like i said he's one that could do that so thank you so much Cashmere P, I can't wait to hear what you got next coming up and stuff like that. Phenomenal, phenomenal music that you be putting out out there. Um, next question comes from Saucy Marie, the champagne mommy. What is the one time uh, you were beyond fed up with what was happening in the genre and was uh, because of a particular project, rapper, or trend in general? tight jeans is one time i was really really fed up in the culture we got into a point too where like niggas was starting to wear skirts and kilts and all of this like you know did he had on one and kanye was wearing one at one point in time then we had young thug on his album cover doing this type of shit as well that whole little time period right there i don't know what the fuck was happening in hip-hop i don't want to get rid of anything because you can't just wash out any era of hip-hop everybody has something solid to bring to the table amongst the best of their era and i truly do believe that but <clears throat> i wasn't a fan i wasn't like a fan of fucking saggy jeans and the overly saggy jeans and all of that stuff like that so just to flip the script to go into these tight ass jeans <clears throat> nah I, w I wasn't really a fan of that neither but really not because of a particular project or rapper even when like somebody like yo when you say like a particular rapper even when somebody what was the um damn what was the white boy's name slim jesus even when i saw that type of shit happening like even all the littles and stuff didn't really even bother me too much because they were doing anything and i don't mind that but something about that just like that type of thing that was going on there just a parody of that i know everybody want to say like you know six nine and what he was doing and stuff like that but you know, I would never want to throw away any of that. We got to learn from all our experiences in every ever of hip-hop. So I won't want to throw nothing away. Um, and I think I think I answered your next question because you said if you could erase an entire hip-hop era, which one would it be and why? Like, nah, I wouldn't erase not one. I wouldn't erase any era in there because we all have to look back and be like, dog, what was going on? So we all make the same mistake twice. Imagine erasing the era. Like, you got powers, right? Got all these powers, right? And you erase an era just for the shit to rock out and that same shit happen again. <laughs> You're like, damn, I got to erase some shit again. I got to use all this power. So, now nah, I really wouldn't want to do that. I think, you know, the culture is in a place now where it's much... It's really going back to the golden era where everybody has their lane space and stuff like that. But the underground has to just get more attention. Like, the people in the underground, we have to realize that you have to make fucking songs for real low. That's going to catch the attention and not be... You know so far off the board but nah i don't think i could erase anything like that i'm not like that you feel me i'm not gonna do that so i appreciate you so much champagne mommy let's go um next question comes from check the rhyme one my guy ruben over there i see you salute to you thank you so much for your consistent support three most anticipated projects for 2021 hey i ain't gonna hold you <laughs> like 
I can't wait to hear this Drake album. I have such a thing about this Drake album because this is the first album he's like really going to be able to capitalize off of without being associated with uh, Cash Money Records or maybe like the second one. I'm not sure what Scorpion was under, whatever have you. He's giving us all these like little tidbits of stuff like um, re-putting out Care Package and giving us the Dark Day, Dark Lane demos tape and all of this stuff. With all of that that he's put out there, I'm trying to see what direction he's really taking on this next album as well because, you know, he could go any direction he want, but I want to see what's going on with that. Just for, listen, I ain't going to lie to you. Me and this nigga is part of the Legion of Light Skin. I ain't going to front. I'm a Drake fan. Don't get it twisted, confused, fucked up. I don't care what y'all feel about it. Oh, he don't write his own records. Oh, he doesn't do this. A lot of the niggas that y'all love don't write their own records. A lot. A lot. All right, so let's just get it out there like that. Um, I definitely need a Kendrick Lamar album, to be honest with you. He's been gone too long. We've seen J. Cole this year. It would be dope to see Kendrick Lamar. Kendrick Lamar always brings that energy to what he does, where it's one of these things where lyricism in the mainstream really matches up really well, and I really do want to see that. I'm also excited to see this Rome, uh, Rome Streets Ransom Project. I'm excited to see the Mussolini and Knife Wonders project um, off the top of my head. Um, we also supposed to be getting a post-humorous, I never pronounced it right, so forgive me, please, Nipsey Hussle album with, like, unreleased music from Nipsey Hussle, and I would like to see that, too, and I hope they do that really, really well. So thank you so much, Check the Rhyme, for your question. But, yeah, those are the ones right there I would like to see go down. Next question on here comes from Keith at, uh, my God, at KTBT the God. Thoughts on Saigon versus Vado battle. What is what y'all talking about Vado, dog? And I fuck with Vado. I ain't gonna front, but, like, yo, what? I don't have no thoughts on that right there. I'm not trying to see both these niggas battle. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna watch it, but I ain't trying to see these niggas battle. I ain't gonna hold you. This shit does not excite me at all. I'm not excited. You feel me? Shout out my battle rap niggas. But no, no, no. I can't do that. I don't care. I ain't even gonna hold you. I don't care. I have no thoughts about it, Keith. You know, I don't even come at you like this or none of that. But, dog, I don't care. You can ask me other battle rap questions in the world and stuff like this. This, I have no fucking interest in whatsoever. I'm not excited. Like, y'all, I'm not. Oh, uh, thank you so much, Keith. I appreciate your question on that. Next question comes from Watson. I got Watson 3172. You feel me? Shout out to PSA Hip Hop. Shout out to um Three Letter Men over there. What's a better hip hop posse cut, Control or Twice in a Lifetime? Hey, yo, watch. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> You're going to stop asking me these errorous posse cut questions. Now, I can't remember the two that you asked me before. Oh, yeah. It was um it was a Jay-Z track. It did it was a uh, Special K's track or whatever have you. And I see that you you do this div divisional error error risk type thing every time you ask me a question. It's no way on earth I could co-sign control. I mean, like seriously, I can't co-sign a nigga from the West Coast saying he's the king of New York. What type of shit is that? I can never co-sign no shit like that. I don't care what's happening. Twice in a Lifetime, that's the most deaf joint. Word Smith is on there. You know, Black Star joint or whatever have you. I would have to go by that or for automatic default because there's no way I could co-sign that control track and being from the East Coast. What type of shit, Tommy? Being from New York, what type of time are you on? Ain't you from Brooklyn too? What type of time you on? You feel me? How you feel about Big Daddy Kane's show and prove posse cut Watson. Let me know how you feel about sh the show and prove posse cut with a uh, fuck. It's one of the guys on there. I forget his name. It's over with the S. It's Sauce Money. It's uh, ODB Jay Z. How you feel about that one? So we gonna stick it to this shit. How do you feel about that posse cut and that being a like a torch being passed to Hove too? Now, Hov got two strong cosigns. How do you feel about him having, like, a big cosign and a big Daddy Kane cosign? How you feel about that? How you feel about that track, Show and Prove, Watson? All right? I love you, Duff Watson, too. Salute to you. Thank you so much for your question. Next question comes from Underscore 
skis. I ain't fucking with you skis. You asked me a thousand questions too. Tuscan leather or 6 p.m. in NY. Tuscan leather. All right. I'm going to do rapid fire with your ass. Um, if it was written is better than reasonable doubt and some have it over Illmatic, why is it not in Goat Talks? Yo, you come to the wrong place, my guy. You come to the wrong place, my guy, talking to me about Nas albums. I don't fuck with Nas. I don't fuck with Nas. I'm sorry. Above and beyond all thing, I am fucking Brooklyn's finest since 1982. You understand what I'm saying to you? Don't be coming asking me about this man's discography, none of that. Mm -mm. It was real personal for me. It was real personal for me. You must be new around here. It was really, really personal for me. I don't give a fuck. I don't care about it was if it if 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 it was written is better than reason. But who told you that? I ain't tell you that. I ain't co I ain't co-signing none of that shit. If some have it over Illmatic, fuck out of here. Like I was give respect where respect is due. Illmatic, one of the most impactful um albums of all time. Why is it not in Ghost Go Talks? Cause y'all don't give a fuck enough about it. I'm not having that conversation. Period. So, thank you so much, skis. But damn, I ain't beat. Next question comes from Shadowlands. Requirements to be called underground and mainstream. Requirements to be called underground. You don't have a mainstream fan base. Yeah, yeah. Listen, with this whole thing with mainstream versus underground, the internet have got y'all fucking confused. To the fact that y'all think that a lot of these artists are actually more known than what they really are. A lot of them are not. A lot of them are not. And if you're not chart topping, I'm not talking about breaking or anything like that. To be mainstream, you have to be chart talking, top like chart topping. You have to be household name or people even heard of you. Some of the people I love in the underground so much. And been around a long time people don't even know that they're rapping right now you understand what i'm saying to you so this whole even though we revered and we talk about them every day and stuff like that we are a small little group of of people that is holding this shit down like how it's supposed to be held down talking about it every day and bringing attention to it or, um anytime that we can and making sure everybody has heard everybody's work the underground can never be even think about being mainstream again until they get like mainstream promotion because it's happening in the mainstream but they still promote their records over there the underground does not promote their records properly they think tweeting on twitter and fucking throwing the ig post up there is fucking promotion very few of them are doing the shit right way like okay uh what side gun had uh you know his post in times square so did um, Edo and Flea Law with Rock America 2 and all of these things like that. Yo, it takes more. It's a, you still need a fucking street team to get this shit popping. So, you know, when you mainstream, when you're a mainstream artist, people know your name, even if they're not familiar with them, with your music, they've heard of you. And underground artists is still this thing. <sighs> it's crazy because underground is still an underground scene. And y'all don't think that it is because we're online, but it's still uh, it's still underground unless you know to actually go and look for like a, a artist like a, a a Rome Streets or something like that. That name may not never float across you anywhere but online. You feel me? Like, that's real right there. And he's one of the greatest lyricists we have. I got to throw Definite Magician on that um, top projects of 2021 list. It's just not happening right. Yo, the underground need to, they got to promote. We got to promote to make that shit mainstream. Because what people fail to realize, like, underground is not a sound. Underground is not a sound. Despite what y'all want to think and feel, underground is not a sound. And I'm gonna t let me show you how underground is not a sound. Tyler, the creator, have his project that came out. I may review it. I may not review it. I don't know how I feel today. You feel me? The first track on there is the Michael Irvin, what's I got Michael Irving beat, right? Is Underground still a sound? Is Underground still a sound if he's using a Underground artist's beat on a mainstream album? Is it still a sound? I don't think so. 
Y'all gotta realize what is going on here. So, is Tyler the creator mainstream? Fuck yes. Hell yes. And he's one of the very few artists that used his, like, Grammy win and stuff like that the correct way, like, the proper way to give, to shine, give shine to the underground. Soon as you seen that, he was on um tracks with What's That Gun. He's always get a verse here, always get a verse here. And he's fucking mainstream. Don't get it twisted, confused, or fucked up. But, man, I'm telling you, underground, we got a long way to go. But it ain't going to take too much longer because we do have people breaking through. Despite everything y'all be saying about, like, you know, a burden of proof and all of this stuff. That shit, that shit is on the charts, dog. That shit is getting recognition. You feel me? Not not just all those little like publications and stuff like that. Like I was really really proud to see Westside Gun and um, Matt Comey on Rolling Stone and all of these things getting all this stuff attention. But I'm like, dog, how? Like, where's the numbers? Like, how much did the album sell? How much did the album stream? Where's the fucking data on this shit so we could know and get a variance of how much that shit really meant? Like that shit do it'd be really really odd i'd be having a lot of thoughts about stuff like that because i do want real hip-hop to come back to the forefront i want everything to have its space you feel me like for real though we can't just say you know real hip-hop needs to come to the um forefront and the youth have nothing to do like they need their space too when they go twerk and they like the baby and they like megan and stallion but we over here we like you know um Griselda and Ransom and Rome Street to Edo and Flea Lord and all these people here. But I think it should be like a real, real, like, mesh together going on there. Like, dog, like, I'm talking too fucking much. I'm about to get out of here. But we really, really need to step up how we do things over here and support everything the right way. We got a champion for that shit to be like how it is for the artists that we respect and we know the ones that's going to hold us down. But I'm about to get out of here. I'm Madam Money. You can follow me on Twitter and IG at Madam Money Says. That's M-A-D-A-M-M-O-N-E-Y-S-A-Y-S. Merch coming soon. Merch coming soon, guys. You feel me? You feel me? Shout out to Nail Limb always on there. Look, y'all made me pop my front shot twice. You feel me? I'm not be. I'm about to get out of here, guys. Peace. Target. I'm flooding the market, a break from the garbage An artist, sensitive about mind and pardon No margin for error, flawless beware The black cat goddess, you walking, walking with a panther Painting these pictures with words like Samantha MacGyver Alchemy on the track, make it lava And I won't stop rocking till I retire Singular or plural, she make numero uno Colder than you know